Richard and I are going to present about an invasive species in the Mediterranean Sea. The ornate wrasse, is it an invasive species? This is the outline of our presentation. First, we're going to do the introduction, study design, analysis, discussion, and finally, the conclusions. Ornate ras, or Thalassoma pavo in the Latin name, is one type of rasses that is native to the Eastern Atlantic Ocean and also the Med Sea. It inhabits rocks and sea grasses areas uh, in the depth of 1 to 50 meters and it can reach up to 20 centimeters in length. Now, even though this species is native to the Med Sea, it's only native to the southern part. And because this species is thermophilic, which means that it prefers warm water, and because of the warming of the ocean, the distribution of this species is now expanding northwards. And for this reason, it can be used as an indicator to monitor the warming of the ocean. Now in this, we can see two interactions for the ornate rest is the competition and predation. Now in general, animals can compete by reducing the availability of shared resources to the competitor or by reducing the ability of the competitor retrieving these shared resources. Now why do we use these two ornate ras and common ras? It's because these two are very abundant in the Med Sea and also because they have uh, almost the same size and they share almost the same preferences in habitats, in feeding strategy and also the prey. And this is the prey, the sea urchins that we can find in our studies. And a study by Mulatso in 2013, uh, they did a research on the ornate ras and the common ras, and they found that the ornate ras uh, actually altered the common ras behavior and also habitat preference. And for this reason, we observe, we have a research question of can we observe the negative effects of ornate ras in the northern Med, Med Sea? And we put the hypothesis, the ornate ras does have a negative impact on the northern Med Sea. And for the study design, first the location, because the ornate ras is moving northwards, that's why Lerang's Island is one of the most, uh, we can find it's one of the suitable place to do research on this. And in La Reims, we studied in two different locations. First, in Ile saint Marguerite and Ile saint honora And Il in S Ile saint Marguerite, there were four stations, which we call the SK. And in Ile saint honora there were two stations. And each of these stations, we have 10 replications. So in total, we have 60 points. Now, for the field work, the methods used, we put a transect of 10 meters in length and three meters depth. And each time we observe around five to 10 minutes and we observe what kind of species there is and also we measure the abundance. And for the study time, we measure every summer from 2013 to 2019, except in 2017. And next, we analyze the data. First, we sort the data and we sort it by having the key species, which in our studies is the ornate ras, the sea urchins, and also the common ras, and also the richness. And next we did some calculations for the totals per year and the means per site, and we calculated also the Shannon index, and finally we did statistical tests on correlation regression tests. And next for the analysis, I'm going to hand over to Richard. Thank you, Alia, for going over the introduction and the study design for us. Very interesting. So before we can really start to analyze uh, our statistical tests, we need to first understand the dynamics of the populations for uh, our key species, which are the ornate ras, sea urchins, and common ras. In the first graph, we look at the change over time. And, we can, and in the second graph, we look at the geographical change, so change per SK station. And the first observation we can make is that there's a high variation in sea urchin uh, populations in orange. Uh, the next two observations is that there's a relatively low population of ornate ras and a relatively high population of common ras. 
These uh, two last observations are quite important because we will be taking a specific look at the interactions between these two species as they are competitors. We are unsure as to why there is such a high variation in uh, sea urchin populations. It could be due to our sampling time or it could be due to other environmental uh, or anthropogenic uh, effects on, the, on their populations. So first we wanted to look at the effect of ornate RAS on the local biodiversity. So we did a correlation regression test uh, comparing the total number of ornate RAS to the total richness uh, per year. Um, and we found a very strong correlation, which was quite nice. However, it is not statistically significant, so we were not able to prove the null hypothesis that there is that, uh, uh, disproved the null hypothesis. Um, so we therefore moved on to a second test with a stronger metric. So we looked at the Shannon Wiener index uh, per year, which is a stronger representation of biodiversity than just simply richness. And we found very much the same thing. But once again, even though it was more significant, uh, it was still non-significant. Uh, and finally, we looked at uh, richness, again, uh, compared to, uh, correlated with ornate RAS, but this time over uh, sites. So now we have uh, 60 points. Here, we did find a statistically significant uh, result. However, now the correlation is significantly weaker. It's more that there is no real relation or direct uh, relationship uh, between uh, the ornate RAS and the biodiversity. Or at least there's no effect of the ornate RAS on the biodiversity. We moved on uh, then to uh, look at uh, the relationship between the ornate wrasse and, uh, and other key species that uh, it has uh, major interactions with. So here we looked at uh, the average ornate wrasse found per site correlated against the average common wrasse found per site. And we find uh, a weak but uh, positive uh, correlation between the two that is statistically significant. Uh, you will notice actually uh, a point right here. We did remove the point. Uh, it didn't have very big effect on our results, so we decided to leave, in, leave it in uh, for, uh, for the presentation. We did the exact same test, this time looking over a period of time. Uh, so each point represents one year, and again we cross-correlate the ornate RAS versus the common RAS. And once again, we find that positive uh, correlation uh, against um, and with a statistically significant uh, a result. Now let us discuss these graphs. But before we're really able to, we need to understand the sources of error. So as you may know, there are three major sources of error, environmental, procedural, and human error. Uh, in this case, environmental error may come from the bad uh, weather that we had uh, during 2019. Um, or during other years. It did prevent us from properly sampling the sites, uh, at least in 2019. The procedural error may come from the fact that we did change our equipment, and that may have had an effect uh, over the years uh, in our sampling technique. Finally, the human error is quite uh, relevant, as we had different uh, sampling teams for each year. This is a little bit mitigated uh, in our uh, statistical tests when we look at correlation regression tests uh, over time, so per year, uh, as that is a ratio uh, per year. So that does reduce the effect of that a little bit. Now what do these tests really mean? Let's break them down into three parts. We saw that there was no conclusive trend uh, between uh, the ornate RAS and uh, biodiversity uh, within the Lejeunesse Islands. However, the data did suggest that positive uh, correlation between them. So therefore, we believe that is due to the fact that the ornate RAS uh, populations will be affected by the local ecosystem health, which can be measured uh, through the biodiversity. So as there's more biodiversity, ecosystem functionality, and, other, and a healthier ecosystem, you will see a rise in ornate RAS. The, uh, we, spec we speculate that the relationship is not the inverse, and that a rise in ornate RAS will uh, cause a rise in um, biodiversity. We were very surprised to see that positive trend between the common RAS and the ornate RAS as they are competitors. But however, once we looked a little bit more into the research, we could see that uh, there was only a negative effect 
from ornate wrasse to common wrasse when the populations of ornate wrasse were, three, were two to three times higher than that of the common wrasse. As we saw earlier on, uh, when we looked at the populations, uh, there's significantly less ornate wrasse within the Léhance Islands and the common wrasse. So then it makes sense that there is no negative correlation between the two. However, we still have that positive cor uh, correlation. And this is, again, due to their relationship to the biodiversity and uh, ecosystem health. As the biodiversity increases, we do expect to see a rise in both ornate wrasse and common wrasse. Uh, for sea urchins, we did not show the graphs for sea urchins uh, within this presentation. The reason for that is that none of it was statistically significant and we couldn't really draw any conclusive conclusions as there was no correlation anywhere. So we did not think it was important uh, to show uh, within the presentation. So now that we have a better idea of these results, what comes next? Well, we need to keep on uh, monitoring the situation at the Lejans Islands as a population change may give us, in ornate wrasse, may give us some key information uh, in the future to see how they truly affect the ecosystem. We also need to look at different sites. This will help us uh, expand our understanding of the ornate wrasse within the Northern Mediterranean Sea. Um, and finally, more research is needed. We actually propose a very similar study, but done in a location where there are significantly more ornate wrasse, as this will help us determine if we can support what is said in the literature about the relationship between the ornate ras and the common ras, and to see if we should keep them as a just an alien species or if we should classify them as an invasive species. Well, let us conclude. So the effect of the migration of ornate ras must be monitored as alien, uh, invasive species are becoming a major problem throughout the oceans uh, due to shipping lanes and connectivity. Added on with other anthropogenic factors, uh, it is important that we monitor uh, the movement of the ornate wrasse. This way we can help protect ecosystem health uh, within the Mediterranean. Within the Léhans ecosystem, there was no uh, observable effect of the ornate wrasse on the local ecosystems. Therefore, we were not able to answer our, or we were able to answer our research question and say that there was no observable effect and we were not able to prove uh, our hypothesis and therefore, and not able to disprove our null hypothesis, which would be that there is no observable effect of the ornate wrasse. Uh, this could be due to the low populations, as we have mentioned earlier on, of the ornate wrasse. And it is key that we uh, keep on researching this topic and more research is definitely needed. We would like to acknowledge in no particular order for their help in this, uh, in this study uh, the Marais and Schema team, which included Christophe, Eric, Steve, Aldine, and Cristal. We'd also like to thank the Cannes firefighting team uh, who uh, helped us uh, and ferried us to the island and helped make sure we were safe throughout the island. The Lejans team who helped, uh, who housed us, also deserves uh, thanks. And finally, we'd like to thank uh, the PhD students who helped us, Alice and Adrienne. Here are references. Thank you for listening to our presentation. I hope it was interesting. Do you have any questions? <laughs>